Erica, so great to meet you. I love Ava. She is insane. And it's yeah. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You are so good at creating such different characters for every game you're in. Can you talk to me a little bit about your uh, character creation process and what you're excited to explore with Ava specifically? I feel so fortunate that I have multiple outlets for just really uh, stretching and experimenting uh, as an actor uh, and as a storyteller. And Ava was a result of being what Abria says in sports is called the fill, I think, where it's like, you know, you have your people where it's like, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then you just need somebody to come in and round out a team. And I, f I really love doing that because everybody was throwing out ideas of characters and it slowly built up that we were a family. And then I said, oh, we need a older generation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with Ava, I was so excited to be a character who was largely unlikable and, and said things that I, I think, you know, would be a little uncomfortable, but very good for the storytelling aspect of it and character dynamics. Um, and I really appreciated feeling safe at the table to do so because everybody it is truly, I, I've never seen role play like this at a table. Everybody was so in it and the dynamic right from the get go was so tight. And then being able to slot in a truly unpleasant old lady in there was uh, wonderful really wonderful i love her <laughs> i'm so glad because that's the thing it's a challenge as a performer to create a character um, especially if you're also writing them live as it's happening who is unpleasant but still watchable and and not to is not going in is not going to shut down other people and their interactions and the story and uh saying no but uh so i think it was it was nice to find those little moments of what is why do they put up with ava other than that she's family i think actually I would say there was a little more leeway this season than any other, because that's the idea is your family. Gosh, they are the ones that know how to annoy you the most, but you still love them in a certain way. And you have to kind of reconcile that of not getting along with these people who you do really love deeply. Definitely. And I love the different dynamics that you created with how you approach being a mother versus a grandmother versus a mother-in-law. Can you talk a little bit about that in those different relationships? Oh my goodness. Everybody, again, everybody just playing at the top of their intelligence. Uh, Brennan, it's just so easy to, you know, we are like family at this point and just seeing moments where we could sort of wiggle in with each other. Um, I think Abria had decided to have the vignettes of her character introduction be duo scenes and putting me with Brennan was just such a gift because not only would that character be the most comfortable with uh, haranguing her oldest daughter, um, but also I have the most experience, you know, giving Brennan shit. So uh, it was a really like, like finding little surprises in there, uh, you know, like the, uh, oh, you know, trying to set, set your daughter up was a surprise to me. I didn't plan that. Um, and, but, uh, you, you know, so the, the physicality of all of it, I got to, we got to say so much about our characters in such little time. Uh, and then also just constantly finding gifts for each other, uh, during the season, like, uh, me, me telling Brennan, I mean, like, oh, uh, Tula's a hoe. 
<laughs> and, um, you know, with the grandkids too, it's, you see it all the time. I always am feel like I would be the perfect grandparent, but I would, I never want children of my own just because you can spoil them in a certain way and you can sort of, uh, uh, make life difficult for their parent, uh, while still, you know, maintaining a good relationship with them. Uh, and then as, uh, I mean, just, gosh, I'm so in awe of Rashawn as, as a, as a player, as an actor, as, as, you know, just a storyteller and just giving like her reactions to me and her and, and Viola's reactions to Ava were just so mm, just like rich and nuanced. And uh, Jasper was an absolute blast because I think in some ways the trepidation of Thorn towards Ava mirrored a little bit, uh, you know, Jasper's uh, and, uh, nerves in stepping into the the dome. He's uh, he was so nervous to begin with, but in some like he was he's brilliant and he's a good listener and uh, incredible at reacting to things. And so I immediately knew that I could lean in on the classic, you know, meet the in-laws tropes and have him uh, just p absolutely play up that charming British uh, flusteredness. Uh, and, and he just, oh, that was wonderful. And I think, you know, you start to see a little bit of, of, of the arc going on with the two of them very strongly uh, of the, you know, uh, you know, like, I, you better not hurt my daughter. I feel like Ava is definitely the kind of person when he came around calling, you know, was was smacking her raccoon baculum and saying, like, look at this here. I got this off of a raccoon that I killed when I was about your age, you know, and it, intimidating him. Uh, but it's yeah, just such a gift to immediately uh, take off running with everybody from the first episode and know exactly who they are to each other. Um, just the brilliant, the because of family, because of being a family, because of uh, just really trusting everybody as performers. It's so much fun to watch. I also love that you have a weapon and that that is your weapon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brie and I decided early on, uh, gosh, I can't remember. I'll have to look up the text or the email, but I think it's, you know, Brie's like, do you want a club or a weapon of some kind? Or are you just going to go in and be, uh, you know, like uh, bare fisted? Uh, and and I was like, oh, I know. Yeah, I would definitely want like a little like, bone club, I think. And I can't remember which one of us. At this point, we have this mind meld and one of us came up with oh it's got to be a dick bone and the other one said oh definitely a raccoon one too um yeah and then ava's experienced kind of a huge amount of change in a really short amount of time the warren is gone all these other stoats are gone and then now they've met this new very strange group of stoats how do you think she's adjusting to this it's fun i as erica always I feel like I'm pretty good at adapting. I have to be as an improviser. Uh, when you're set in your ways and you have done the same thing for so long and that's the thing that you're used to helping you survive, um, it's hard to change. But of course you have to balance as a storyteller, how do you have somebody be resistant to change and still help move the plot along? I think Brennan, uh, like seeing Brennan do a good job of that too, of being very resistant to things um, and then, but still bringing stuff up in a way that like f drives everything forward. Um, similarly, I had to say like, oh, I, I don't like change. I don't like feelings. I don't like sort of solving it. But understanding we have 10 episodes to do a whole story with arcs for everybody. So we got to keep it moving. Um, I think that Ava is intrigued by the idea because she is uh, she does want to do whatever is best for the family. And so 
you know, and, and she's had to, you know, just even in the course of living a hard life, you have to adapt in order to survive, just like in, you know, Call of the Wild that they made us read. It's, it's, that's the laws of nature. You have to adapt to survive. So while she has that grandma trait of, you know, just being really resistant to change, uh, she has that animal instinct to adapt to survive. I love that. And then this season has been full of surprises with the animated puppet shows, the bear map that looked insane and gnarly, and then just the story reveals. What for you has been one of the most surprising parts of this season? The brilliance of Abrea is that she's constantly surprising you. Uh, Every season has been an innovation. I mean, that's true of all Dimension 20 seasons, but specifically Abria pushes storytelling and the envelope in a way that is, I want to say unhinged. Like she, in some ways, didn't learn the, I mean, she knows the rules so well, you know, there, there's always, you know, the joke about her and Brennan being the rules lawyers. She has learned them and committed them and, and internalized them so much that she is able to play with them and break them and understand how to use them to her advantage in storytelling. Um, and the fact that every beat, you know, whether it's a fight, or a social encounter informs the central theme of the story and aids us in finding the next beats is like continued to astonish me throughout the season. I think a great example of that is the bear. Obviously shocking, obviously true, like truly the best battle map ever created just in terms of innovation and creativity in in viscous it is viscosity um uh, unbelievable an unbelievable work of art um but also it allowed ava to explain uh the, the use of technology she says, you know, in, in episode three, Ava describes, tries to describe something she doesn't have the words for, uh, trucks carrying humans. Um, and she says, oh, I saw human, or I saw things like living creatures in a giant non-bear, you know? And so Abria in putting that bear in episode two established the world we were in uh, you know, showed how scary it was, um, gave us a really incredible encounter, and also gave us the words and 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 the way to understand uh, how how to move forward and the themes of, you know, yes, what is it to be human? Uh, why, like the use of technology. And then what did, what were your thoughts when the new Stoats did reveal, hey, humans are the enemy in this latest episode? I didn't get to finish the screener of it, but now that you say it, cause like I, I, I still have a half an hour left to watch, but I do recalling back, um, I didn't know. I mean, I really, uh, we've all just had, we all just had to guess about what the blue was and humans and the mysteries of burrows and we were figuring out what was happening in real time abria told me about seeing the vehicle seeing large beings and describing them i had to put together that it was humans in a truck in hazmat suits and that the blue is what the blue is um, and what the dust is. Um, that's a long, that's a long way to come back around to say uh, it again, just shocking all like every step of the way, a shock and a delight and a surprise. And I think having 
figured out prior to this that it was humans, it was still so shocking to understand, you know, like the weight of that and just like the unknowable horror of it all. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, ter- it was, it's terrifying to think about. And then how does it feel to be a part of the 20th season of Dimension 20? I can't believe it. I was in the first ever, uh, what we called back then side quests, mm-hmm. um, the non-intrepid hero seasons. And it was, I, I, and just seeing where it's come, how we've come a long way, baby. It's, it's truly an honor to be part of this with these people. And I think this season is such a milestone, not even just in terms of the number of seasons, uh, but truly a, a pinnacle, I think, of, of what Abria and the crew have done and can do and are moving forward with. I love that. And then you are part of two of my favorite seasons, uh, Mischief's and Magic and the Seven. I hope we get more of both of those. If we did, is there anything specific you'd like to explore with your characters from those? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, it's it's so funny because uh, so much <clears throat> of what I decide about my characters is informed by the GM and talking with fellow players and saying, well, if your character did this, then, well, it would only make sense that uh, Kay would go in this direction. Um, There's something very special about those seasons to me um, in that it was the first time there were a lot of firsts for me. Uh, The seven was the first sort of all femme table that I've been at where we were really free to be the most and to not have to constantly mask or worry that we were too much or uh, it's all these little gates that your mind passes through um, Um, when you're femme of, is this right? How will this, how will people view me in this? And that's just a survival mechanism, but being at a table with all femmes led by a Brennan who knew exactly when to step up or or step back and encouraged us and everybody supporting each other in such a huge way. It was so freeing. It was so freeing and significant. And I could see that in everybody around the table. And we're still all in a text thread too, you know, we're all still friends. Uh, it was really special and with miss mad like yeah that was sort of uh you know a lot of members of that that were first of all it was a a majority black season you know and and majority bipoc season and that was also uh you know another gate that you don't have to put your mind through you know where you feel safe to explore things that you might not venture to do um, at a table where you're the minority. And, you know, having both of those, uh, you know, those identities interwoven with plots, the, the, the respective plots and supported by the respective characters um, was, was unbelievable. Um, so basically uh, what I'd want to explore uh for for those again is to continue to play characters that i wouldn't normally get to play and and do things with them i wouldn't normally always feel empowered to do i love that and then you also had another first kind of recently with first time gming on worlds beyond number ah yes it was and again i was terrified because i'm not necessarily i i don't have that training imagine the first time that you have to you know uh yeah imagine your first game being something that you know people are paying to see and that is for your friends who are truly literally the best in the world at this thing that you're doing you know it's it's 
harrowing, but also, again, nothing but love and support and yes, crazy yes anding from my friends. And the community was also so supportive. And at the end of the day, just being in that room and laughing and having fun with everybody and seeing when you he- when you see how you can surprise and entertain your friends, that's the best feeling in the world. And I think that's what we're all chasing in all of, of the things that we do together is like we want to kind of surprise and entertain our friends. You are fantastic. I am curious if you were to ever GM in the dome, is there a specific genre you would want to play with? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, the the idea of of well, here's the thing about about jamming in the dome is it's not even just about the DMing part. Is that that's like five percent of what you do. The rest of it is also is like meetings and having to email people about miniatures and sets and character design and uh, like truly so much paperwork. Um, and I I wonder, you know, if I could like how ambitious I want to be with something like that. Um, but there is a framework that I have in mind for it that I would, I would be excited to explore. Um, and I don't know, maybe I should keep it, keep it a secret, just, you know, I just that. in case they ever do ask me, but I can't, I mean, that, that would be crazy. That would be, that would be crazy. I would do it if they asked me though. I just would, I'm too curious about what, what the process is like. Well, now I feel like we need that because I need to know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. I do have, I do have something in mind. I wonder if it would, and I wonder if it would work. It would again, sort of make use of the specific talents of the people that they bring into the dome and the technology that they have in there and the, uh, incredible work that the art team does. Oh, yeah. Now you got me thinking. I love that. I hope we see it. I do also, I'm also a huge Critical Role fan. So I do want to say as someone who is very happy to see Laudna and Imogen together, thank you for being one of the catalysts to set that off. Because that was (laughs) Oh, thank you. Um, It's, uh, you know, when you're, you play a guest, when you're guesting on a show, uh, you have a very small window to go in and establish your character, do an arc, and also uh, sort of seamlessly uh, uh, integrate and extricate from an ongoing game. Um, I feel like I got to, I, I got, you know, I, I came in with some very specific goals in mind. And I'm grateful that Matt, um, you know, was up for a lot of the things that that we did. Uh, but it, yeah, it's I think because I'm used to like four four episode seasons, ten episode seasons, uh, I have a tendency to just like go for it. <laughs> you know, it's so great. Um, and then, what have you found the most surprising about playing Ava that maybe just you've learned about yourself from that process. I don't think that there was like an exactly like a, like a snipered moment where that like, you know, the, the shoot shot through the door moment with Ava. Um, but I will say that just being an antagonistic character is actually really fun and good especially when you're in an environment where people are willing to push back against you, but at the same time, move forward with you. I want to play a villain more, I think, is is the takeaway. I like that takeaaway. I enjoy your more antagonistic yeah. characters. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it feels good to be bad, you know? And then can you talk a little bit about the how the mechanics were adjusted for the stoat element of being a barbarian? Uh, for being a barbarian, uh, <laughs> I think uh, also uh, there was an adjustment in our brains that I don't think we ever actually calculated out on paper of distance. Yeah. You know, like what is for it's not really 10 feet, you know, <laughs> uh, that would be crazy. 
but um it was it was really really fun to uh be like in the in the action all the time and to have so many things that i could do per turn um that was really fun to play with um what what did we do for adjusting with stoats with barbarian uh, specifically barbarian um i think it was very fun to decide um to make the decision to keep the role the, like the terrible like all ones role so that i have like three charisma um and uh i think the only sort of thing that we homebrewed was that um uh i used strength instead of charisma to intimidate which makes sense Ava having a three charisma is not only just perfect character wise, it is hilarious. Oh, it's so good. It was so good and so fun. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I love Burrow's End so much. I can't wait for more. Ava's hilarious. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.